Yeah, just recently I heard about this. There's a campaign in Europe to raise money to put these placards on the side of buses, I think in London and Genoa, some other places. And the placards say, there's probably no God, so stop worrying and enjoy your life. And there's versions of that, like, you know, relax, there's no God, don't worry about it. Well, here strikes me, it's another example, of course, of this campaign, the steady campaign of the new atheism against uh, religion in general, but Christianity in particular. And I've spoken out against this many times, and what I notice is how kind of flip popular and deeply unintelligent this form of atheism is. And what I want to do first is contrast it with what I think is a much more serious version of atheism. Go back to the mid-20th century and the work of the existentialists, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus and others. Well, they disbelieved in God. I mean, they argued strongly against the existence of God, but they were more serious about it. They weren't just playing at atheism. They saw it to the bottom of it. They knew that we have in us a deep desire for fulfillment, truth, goodness, justice. In other words, for God. But since there is no God, then, as Sartre said, la vie est absurde. Life is absurd. Life is meaningless. They knew that there's a tension between our desire for God and God's non-existence. Now, the existentialist ethic was, in the face of this storm, in the face of this terrible darkness, you assert your own freedom. You assert your own will and you say, nevertheless, I will go on. Okay. Now, I don't think for a minute they're right about the non-existence of God, but at least the existentialists were serious about their atheism. They saw the implications of it. I think what we see now in a lot of the new atheism is a kind of frivolous or superficial or childish atheism, a kind of playing at atheism. And I think if you go back to the Bible, you will find an answer to both these forms of atheism, the frivolous and the serious forms. In the Bible, you will find passages every bit as dark as anything in Jean-Paul Sartre or Albert Camus or the existentialists. Look at a number of the Psalms and you'll see a very deep sense of how dark and, and often meaningless life seems. But the best example of this is the book of Kohaleth. Kohaleth is an old guy wizened, done it all, seen it all, experienced it all, had it all. Kohaleth presents himself as a kind of ancient combination of Brad Pitt and Barack Obama. He's someone who's had everything. Sex, pleasure, money, power, everything. And his conclusion, he says, all is wind and chase after the wind. Or the older translation, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Now, it's a very perceptive book. All things that we want in life, pleasure, money, power, honor, all the usual things, he's had them. He's had them. Do they satisfy him? No. He, he experimented with them all, you know, and, and probably for a moment enjoyed them all. But he realized in his old age, none of them finally satisfies. And this gives us, I think, the way past the atheist. Because Kohaleth doesn't say, well, therefore, life is absurd. Or... Well, then just sort of enjoy your life. What he says is, don't put your trust, finally, in any of the goods of the world. Rather, trust in the Lord. Reorder your life to God, and then you'll find true joy. Think of a dog, for example, who's eaten his fill, who is properly sheltered, has a nice family around him. That dog is utterly content. That dog just falls blissfully to sleep. We're not like that. If, as the atheists claim, we're just clever dogs, we're just animals with bigger brains, then we would be satisfied when we have enough of, of food and drink and sex and pleasure and shelter. And we should just fall asleep blissfully like any dog. But the thing is, we don't. In fact, precisely when we get all those things that animals want, we're not satisfied. We want something more. That's because we have deeply ingrained in us a sense of the limitedness of this world, that there is something more. In fact, our very wiring for God proves the existence of God. We desire something which transcends the limitations of this world means that we have within us a sort of participation in the eternal. Your hunger is not a sign that food is a projection, but your hunger, in fact, proves the existence of food. Your, your hunger proves the reality of food, right? 
it doesn't mean that food's some kind of subjective projection or an illusion. So that our desires are not, are not uh, misleading us. Our desires order us to realities. So our desire for God. You know, I'm going to turn something around. Uh, religion from the time of Marx has been accused of you know, being the opiate of the people. You know, we just take this drug that will dull our sensitivity to this world, and so we dream about heaven. See, I'm going to turn that right around. I think atheism is the opiate of the masses. I think atheism is a kind of drug. What, is it, what does it mask? It masks this desire that I'm talking about. Let's just pretend I don't have a desire for anything beyond this world. I, I'm going to be satisfied within this world. I would submit to you, you've got to take a drug to convince yourself that that's true. You've got to take something that will dull your sensitivity to your deepest longing. That's what atheism is. You want the opium of the masses. It's precisely this trivial atheism that says, oh, just, you know, relax. Enjoy your life. Take this, you know, just pretend there's no God. See, people accuse religious people all the time of dreaming up this fantasy world. See, but atheism itself is a kind of fantasy world. Wouldn't it be nice if there's no God and I can simply find my satisfaction in this world? Wouldn't it be nice if there's no absolute moral demand? Wouldn't it be nice if I could determine my life? See, I'll turn the tables in that argument and say, well, you're denying God out of your deep psychological need. Stop taking the drug that dulls your sensitivity to the very deepest longing of your heart. It's religion that says, stop taking the drug and wake up.